Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to detect text in images. We will learn how to detect individual characters and words and how to place bounding boxes around them. We will also have a look at how to detect only digits. I upload videos on a weekly basis, so don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful. So let's get started. So first we are going to head on to the Tesseract documentation and here we can find different methods of the installation. So we have Linux, we have Debian, we have Raspbian. So we have a lot of different uh, operating systems here. For macOS we have, uh, you can use Homebrew to install. Now for Windows we are going to go to the downloads page and in the downloads page we are going to go for the binaries so over here we will click on windows installer so once the download completes uh, we will just install it and uh, the only thing you should know is where did you install it and uh, most probably it is going to be in c and program files the folder name would be tesseract ocr so here i am in c and program files and we can locate the tesseract over here and you can see that we have our executable somewhere around here where is it there you go so we have tesseract.exe so this is the file that we will refer to in our uh, python code so we have to copy uh, this path so now in pycharm we are going to first go into file settings and then we are going to go to the interpreter and we will add pytesseract so we will write pytesseract and we will install it and the same way we are going to install OpenCV as well so we will write OpenCV and there you go so we will install that as well now while it's installing let me show you the image that we will be using so here we have our main folder uh, and we have one.png within our main directory so if i just open it up so it's just an image with my channel's name murza's workshop robotics and ai and then we have a few numbers one two three four five up till 15 so we can see how it detects now uh, i think the installations are done so we can move on to importing so first we will import the uh, opencv library so import cv2 and then we are going to import pytesseract import by tesseract now we are going to refer to our executable file so we will say pi tesseract dot pi tesseract dot tesseract cmd is equals to and here we will paste our link for the uh what do you call it? okay let me put this here first and then here and then over here we are going to write tesseract.exe so let me close this out so you can see more clearly so there you have we have the py tesseract um, executable file and then we are going to change all of these to backlashes and there you go so at this point we just want to run it to see everything is fine and there you go so no errors so far so now we are going to read our image so we will write img is equals to cv2.imread and here we have to give the path and our path is 1.png and the thing with uh, pytesseract is that it only accepts rgb values and uh, OpenCV is in BGR. So we have to convert it before we can actually send it to the PyTesseract um, 
library. So here we will write img is equals to cv2 dot cvt color and we will write img is equals to cv2 dot color rgb to pgr no pgr to okay let me just write it down so now that our image is converted we can display it so we can write cv2 dot i am show and we will write the window name for example result and then image now i know that uh, we just converted it into rgb and if you want to convert it back to bgr that's fine just for the demonstration purpose this should work as well then we will write uh, cv2 dot wait key and we are going to delay it for infinity and there you go so we have our image and it's displaying so how do we get the information or the text out of this now it's very simple all we have to do is we have to use one of the functions in the PyTesseract library so how can we uh, know which uh, functions are we talking about so we can just go to the PyTesseract and over here we can see that we have a lot of different functions uh, if you're not familiar how to go uh, you can press control and the left mouse button so control and left mouse button and it will take you to the main uh, script and then here you can see that we have the image to boxes image to data image to OSD so we don't know what each one of these uh, does so what we can do is we can click on it again control and left click and it will take us to where the function is written so here we have our doc string that actually tells us what uh, this function does so the first one we will be using we have a few of them and the first one will be image to string so we will just send in an image and all we need is the text so let's go back and we are going to write right around here we will write print and we will write pytesseract dot image to string and then we are going to input our image and if we run that and there you go so we have our result and you can see that it's detected each and every character properly and it is displaying even the the space here is uh, detected and that's why you can see there is a gap over here and then we have even the numbers the digits all of them they are in correct order and even though they are closely placed to each other the program is able to detect each one of them correctly okay so this is how you can simply get the raw information now how can we actually know where is the location of our uh, character so that we can uh, create a box around it and we can see uh, directly what was actually detected so in order to do that we have if we go back to the functions we have image to boxes so this will give us the output in terms of the bounding box and the text so if we go back and if we just change this or let me just copy this and I will paste this here and over here we will change it to image to boxes and let's print that out and there you go so as you can see now we are getting each character and corresponding to that we have the bounding box information so we have the X uh, point and the Y point and then we have the width and the height of our bounding box so for each of these characters we have this bounding box information and you can see it goes all the way so how can we place these boxes on our image so let's do that so let's define this as detecting characters 
So first we are going to take the information of the size of our image. So we will say height image and width image. And then the third one channel, we are not uh, so concerned about that. So we will leave it as it is. And then we will say image dot shape. So next we are going to Okay, let me close this. Okay, next we are going to add a loop. Or should we write this first? Let's write this first. We will remove that. We will bring it down here. And over here, we are going to store all of the information in a list. So we will say boxes is equals to uh, all of the information being received. So we will say for b in boxes dot split lines we are going to print b so let's run that and there you go so we are getting the same information but the thing is we need each one of these as a list so we can actually uh, pinpoint which value are we referring to so it's easier to uh, use that information so what we can do is we can say b is equals to b dot split and then we have to define split using the space so we can see that we have space in between each one of these so we can say split each value based on the free space uh, we need to print it again so we can see what changed so let's print that out and there we have it so now each one of these uh, has been um, transformed into a list and we can access each element so the first one will be the text so the second one is uh, X then Y then width and height so now what we can do is we can get this information first so we will say x y width and height is equals to b at 1 b at 2 then b at 3 and then b at 4 now uh, all of these are basically uh, strings so we have to change them to integers so we can actually use them so we will write integer and then integer should have copy pasted and then integer so now we can use these values to create a rectangle and uh, to put the text as well so let's first create rectangles so we will write cv to dot rectangle and we have to define our image and then we have to define the x and the y so first we are going to define the x and then the y and then we are going to define the width and the height but for the width and the height we have to add the value of x and the value of y so y plus height and then we have to define what do we have to define color okay so we will define let's say red so 0 0 2 5 5 and then the thickness as 1 and that should do it so we can comment these out and let's run that and there you go so now we have the boxes but something seems to be wrong something seems to be fundamentally wrong so what is it that is wrong so let's go back and look at our values let me just comment one of these uh, remove the comments from one of these and over here we can see that we have these four values but it seems that they are not in the in the order that we expected them to be so the x is fine but the height actually is opposite 
So what we need to do is we need to subtract our image height from Y. So we are going to do image height from Y and then we do not need to add the X and the Y. Normally we have to, but in this case, they're already giving us the direct information. So we don't have to add this and we can just do height minus H. And let's try that again. And there you go. The, the thickness is not right. Let me just add a little bit. And there you go. So now we can see that it is detecting properly and we are able to get our bounding box for each of these characters. Now, next what we can do is we can label these characters around their box so we can see that if they were detected properly or not. So we can write cv2.putText and we define the image. And then, uh, as you know, the character is basically the first element in our list. So we will say B0. And then we have the X and the height image minus uh, Y. And then we are going to write the font cv2.font. Let's grab any one of these and then we are going to write one as the scale and then the color we can put again red so 50 50 and 255 just to dim it out a little bit and then we can write the thickness as two so let's run that and there you go but it's not very visible is it so we can we can bring it down a little bit so we can say here plus 25 let's say and there you go so now the characters are visible and we can see the bounding boxes around them so that's great so next we are going to look at how we can detect words rather than characters sometimes you don't care about the individual characters you care about the words so how can we do that so let me just copy all of this copy that and we will comment this out and we will go down and we over here we will write detecting words so now for that we have something known as the image image to data so let's just run this and see what happens. So we are getting into an error. Now, why is that? Let's just remove all of this and print out the boxes. So print boxes. So let's run that. And there you go. So we have an output. But this time around, we have a lot of columns. So we don't just have, how many did we have before? I think five. And this time around, we have a lot. So we have level, we have page number, block number, paragraph number, line number, word number, then left, top, width, height, configuration, and text. So if we see the last one is our actual text, so we are detecting words and what we can see even this is detected as a single word because it's quite congested so now we need to redefine our for loop so that it can handle uh, the formatting of this data so let's go back and let's comment this out so first of all we can see that uh, our first row is actually uh, the heading so we don't want to use the information when it comes to the first row so the very first thing we will introduce is the counter so in order to add the counter we can say enumerate you can add a variable at the top and write count equals zero and then count that is fine as well but this is a little more efficient way to do it so now 
every time it loops it will uh, put the value of the count in x so we can say that if x is not equals to 0 then we are going to perform all of these actions let me remove this p and let's see let's let's run it and see what happens so now we have again we have an error because our data is not in the correct format that is fine but as long as we are getting the b properly and we are not so if we look at our b it is not in the correct format now what we can do is to fix this we can remove our space and let it decide by itself so if we run that and there you go so now we have um, the data as you can see in the proper formatting and we can see the first four of them are um, how many how many columns do they have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so the first four have eleven and the rest of them the ones that actually have words are twelve so this is the information that we can use to actually print out only the ones that have um, the length of at least 12 not at least exactly 12 so we can write here uh, do we want to keep it let's keep it so we can write here let me remove that so we can write here if length of B is equals to 12 then only we are going to perform these actions okay but now if you remember uh, in the previous one we only had I think five values this time around we have 12 uh, columns so we need to define which of these columns refer to uh, the bounding box values so over here we can see that it is 0 1 2 3 four five and then the sixth one starts with our bonding box so it's six seven eight and nine so we have to use that so we can write here six seven eight and nine so if we use that and if we just run this I hope it works let's see okay so now we are not getting any errors but the location is definitely not right now this is the funny part here the information is given in a different format and I have no idea why they did this so here they are actually using the proper formatting and we can write uh, simply why and over here we can write width plus x and over here we can write height plus uh, y and let's run that and there you go so now we are getting the correct bounding boxes and uh, the last thing we can do is we can put our text so here we can remove that and b0 is not the text b11 is the text so we will write here 11 and then again we have to change the starting point which is x and y and then we have the font and everything pretty much the same so if you run that there you go so now we are getting each of the bounding boxes and we are getting the word that it corresponds to so next we are going to look at how we can detect only digits so if we want to detect only numbers what is it that we can do so let me copy this and uh, okay let me comment this out as well and at the bottom we are going to paste it and now we can add configurations to our PyTesseract function and based on that it will uh, filter out the data for us now what are these configurations uh, let's find out so we can write config ration 
is equals to R and then we will write double dash OEM and three and then double dash PSM and six then we will say output base is digits now you can tell that these are the settings that we will enter here but why this what is the significance of this OEM 3 and PSM 6 so let me just put this here before I explain so we can write um, is it the second one no the second one is language so we need to define that we are defining configuration so config is equals to Kong okay so let me just run this and see if it works and there you go so now we are only detecting the digits and not the alphabets so the same thing we can do uh, with our characters so th this code was for the characters and if we comment this out and if we add the configuration here and we add the config here and let me comment this out if we run that you will see that it works so coming back to our configurations we saw OEM and PSM and what are those so basically if you look at the documentation uh, this image I have taken from the documentation and the first one we are referring to is OEM so here we have the numbers and OEM basically um, represents the engine mode so each of these engine modes you can select so this is mostly the backend stuff that uh, it runs so you can see here it will run tesseract only which is the fastest and cube only better for accuracy but slower then we have number two which is combining both and then we have number three so what we have done is we have put three and it will use the default so the next configuration is our PSM now again this is from the documentation the PSM is basically the page segmentation mode which basically represents the possible modes for our page layout analysis so here we can see that we have orientation and script detection only and then we have uh, automatic page segmentation fully automatic and you can read all of these what we selected was the single block number six assume a single uniform block of text and this is pretty much the default that's why we use that now if you want any specific ones you can read them out and you can use uh, which one you want and I will put these images in the description so that you can refer to them and change according to your project so this is it for today's video I hope you have learned something new uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video